Dr. Keith L. Moore. Dr. Moore is a world-renowned anatomist and embryologist who has authored more than 14 medical textbooks, four of which are in print today. The Developing Human, Clinically Oriented Embryology, first published in 1973, was released in its ninth edition in 2012, and his most recent publication, Essential Clinical Anatomy, was published in its eighth edition just last year. At this point, I'm going to go off script for a moment, because at the time of writing this, that information was accurate. Last night at dinner, Dr. Moore presented me with the 10th edition of the Developing Human Clinically Oriented Anatomy, which was released a few weeks ago. His contributions to anatomy education have touched students throughout the world, with many of his texts appearing in 10 different languages in addition to English. A founding member of the American Association for Clinical Anatomy, he has been at the forefront of anatomical research and education throughout his career as an anatomist. Dr. Moore was born in 1925 in Brantford, Ontario. Following high school, he enlisted in the Royal Canadian Navy from 1944 to 1946, working as a sick birth attendant. Following World War II, he completed his Bachelor of Arts degree here at Western in 1949. It was at this time that he became involved in the anatomical sciences, joining Dr. Murray Barr's research team and earning his Master of Science degree in 1951. Three years later, in 1954, Dr. Moore became the first PhD graduate of the Department of Anatomy at, here at Western for his work on nuclear morphology according to sex in human tissues. Follow, following his graduate training, Dr. Moore had a distinguished career as a professor that began in the Department of Anatomy at the University of Winnipeg, where he rose through the ranks to become head of the department in 1965. He was then recruited to the Department of Anatomy at the University of Toronto as chair, a position that he held from 1976 to 1985. I'm proud to say that my own journey as an anatomist be began under Dr. Moore's leadership at the University of Toronto in 1980, where I had the pleasure of attending his lectures in anatomy and embryology. In 1984, Dr. Moore created the Keith L. Moore Award in Anatomy, which is presented to the most accomplished PhD graduate in anatomy and cell biology here at Western. In 1991, the University of Toronto conferred the title of Professor Emeritus upon Dr. Moore, and in the spirit of the man who loves to teach, he continues to this day to edit and update his textbooks that have contributed so much to medical education throughout the world. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and in the name of the Senate, I ask to you to confer the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa upon Keith L. Moore. By virtue of the authority vested in me as acting chancellor, I admit to you to the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, congratulations, Dr. Moore. On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite Dr. Doug Jones, Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry, to deliver the convocation address written by Dr. Keith Moore. Thank you, Mr. President. Friends, guests, graduates, I would like you to imagine <clears throat> this time as being an opportunity 
to be with your grandfather, listening with wisdom, hopefully some nuggets that you can take with you into your future careers, and understanding a little of the history that has brought him to this degree and in recognition of all of his contributions. Good morning, graduates, family, and friends. I am delighted to join you in the celebration of the academic achievements of the graduating class. Thank you, Professor Rogers, for your introduction. I was pleased when you informed me, Mr. President, that the Senate wished to confer upon me one of the highest honors, the honorary degree Doctor of Science. It is extremely gratifying to receive this distinguished degree from the university that laid the foundation for my rewarding career in medical science. I have enjoyed teaching anatomy and embryology for over 65 years. Clinically oriented anatomy is the anatomical basis of clinical practice. When I was a graduate student, I recognized the need for anatomy books to be clinically oriented and student friendly. I was fortunate to have a dissertation partner who was an intern in surgery. He explained the clinical importance of the blood vessels, nerves, and organs. Beginning in the 60s, I wrote 16 medical books, four of which are still in print. These books are translated into many languages such as Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Polish, and Japanese. The Canadian Medical Association Journal reported that the discovery of the sex chromatin by Dr. Murray Barr's research team at Western was, and I quote, the most important Canadian contribution to fundamental medical sciences since the late Dr. Banting discovered insulin in 1921. Mike Bertram, a Master's of Science student at Western in 1948, was the one who observed and recorded the sex chromatin, which is an inactive X chromosome in the nuclei of cells. Dr. Bertram is now Professor Emeritus in the Division of Anatomy, Department of Surgery, in the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto. Dr. Bertram is an excellent neuroanatomist and researcher. In 1968, he and Dr. Barr received Distinguished Morris Goldblatt Cytology Awards. I joined Dr. Barr's research team in 1950. My project was to determine how the sex chromatin might be helpful clinically. I developed a buccal smear test in 1952, which is a simple and easy. The inside of the cheek is swabbed with a spatula, and the spatula are spread on a glass slide and stained for cytological study. The buccal smear test is used worldwide for the detection of sex of neonates, also called newborns, with ambiguous external genitalia. These babies have complete, incomplete development of their external genitalia. If the sex chromosome is observed in the nuclei of the cells, the baby is a girl. If it is not seen, the baby is a boy. The late Dr. Papkarnou, who developed the pap smear, used the same technique, the buccal smear test, as a vaginal smear test for the detection of women with androgynous insensitivity syndrome. These women have a 46XY karyotype, testes in the inguinal region and a shallow vagina. The external genitalia are female and they are normal appearing females. In 1965, I wrote my first medical book, The Sex Chromatin. I had 23 contributors, which quickly showed that there were many clinical applications for the sex chromatin. Your learning experience have taught you many things beyond what you learned in the labs and from lectures. You learned to be humble, hopeful, and confident about your future. You also learned to be capable of stepping up and taking responsibility and to trust your instincts. You learned to listen, to think about problems, and to defend your decisions. 
the clinical applications of anatomy and the new imaging technologies have revealed living anatomy in many ways. The students receiving their Bachelor of Medical Sciences degree have conducted various research to improve human health, along with the graduate students. Dr. Lala, Professor of Anatomy, Cell Biology, and Oncology, has an active research lab in Western. His medical science graduate students and postdoctoral fellows are working on human breast cancer and placental biology. Other scientists have created isolated human embryonic stem cells and made suggestions for their use in treating intractable diseases. Treatments aimed at cancer stem cells hope the potential for markedly improving cancer therapy. Medi medical education is not just about studying and getting higher grades. It's about character, self-reliance, self-control. Without a sound knowledge of anatomy, it's like a sailing ship without knowledge of a navigator's map. You will remember some of what you heard, much of what you read, and much more of what you have seen, and almost all of what you will experience from contact with patients. Care for patients with empathy and compassion. Keep up with the advances in the field that you have chosen. The rapid advances in medical and dental sciences change almost every year. In three months, I will be 90, and there is never a week goes by that I do not learn something about medicine, dentistry, and medical sciences. Never stop learning. Congratulations and best wishes for your careers that you have chosen. <laughs>